white people. They villains. Exist. Yeah, they're villains now. <laughs> I didn't make it this way. <laughs> History did. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, because I I love seeing your Instagram stories. You're just like, I I love how like you're a scourge on white people. Like it this is like great. It. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, I don't feel like it, but it, it does seem like it. And for like, for who, uh, like for the position I'm in to like, I'm either the only black person in the room or I'm the second black person in the room. And so they keep us away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, you got to see over here, doc. And it's like, okay, what's going over here? And so y'all doing the same thing. Weird. Yeah. You're but, also a drummer. So you have to like, be sitting in one. I have spot. to be sitting somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. Cause I, I don't ever, I don't ever play in the traditional black drummer settings mm. either. I usually, I've, I've found my way into the white spaces when it comes to music, Sure, which is strange, <laughs> but I, I enjoy it. You know, good music, good music will be good music. Yeah, so. exactly. Regardless of, I mean, if you, if you trace it back, yeah. it still goes, back to black people music anyway. Sure. So. Out here in America it does. Yeah. <laughs> and that's totally that's totally fine. And I feel like the people who make good music know that mm. and they want to be true to that. Mm. And yeah. So yeah. As just being black around white people, <laughs> I do feel like uh at any moment one of them will turn into a white person because of something I said. And I'll either have to leave the area <laughs> or like Deal with the deal situation. with the situation. Yeah, it's like yo, okay, my bad, bro. I didn't know you liked Martha Stewart that much. Like, <laughs> I'll get out of here. You know, uh, one of those situations. Because it, 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 it happens. Some, sometimes you have to like double down. You do like, have to no. double down. Yeah. <laughs> Just because Snoop Dogg's a homie doesn't mean that she gets out of right. It's like she's she's still a criminal. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it is a weird thing. Yeah, but yeah, uh, unfortunately. I've been I've been asking my white friends though, like, what does it feel like to be seen as the villain mm-hmm. in in today's like world in 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 the best TV shows and the best movies yeah. to be the one because you're white to be the villain, not because you're the villain. Like Joaquin Phoenix and the Joker is a villain, you know, sure, sure. but you, Daniel Day Lewis is a villain, and there will be blood. But in Get Out you're the villain because you're white. Yeah, yeah. You know, in Atlanta, you're the villain because you're white. It's, it's like very clear. Mm-hmm. Like, and you know, it's, what does that feel like for them? And what is that going to do for colored people mm-hmm. over the next 25 years? As these people who are watching these things, who are taking them in and discussing them and trying to understand themselves better, mm-hmm. will they go in reverse and double down on their whiteness and say, you know what? Forget it. What my grandpa did in the 50s was okay. Because look where I am now. I'm in a nice house. I'm going to have kids now. Are they, are they going to teach them that way too? Is it going to, or, or are they going to, are they going to go, I shouldn't make any more white children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop. I'm, it, it stops with me. The whiteness stops here with me now. Or, or fuck a black man. They might, but I hope not. I would hope not. Go, go, uh, go. No more reproducing. No more white kids. <laughs> you know, or, you know, just let them know, like, here's the thing. Here's the truth. This is what happened. This is how you got here. Uh, it's not your fault, but you bear responsibility, you know, and, but we'll see in 25 years, 30 years, you know, cause young people like yourself, Myself, people in our age groups are, they're becoming teachers now, you know, they're becoming politicians, you know, they're, we're the next 50 years Mm -hmm. and it's going to be weird. It's going to be exciting to see the multicultural cosmopolitan aspect of those generations rising up to these positions and will they be thwarted by, uh, old white dudes Mm -hmm. yet again? (laughs) We shall see. Yeah. I mean, in our generation, they're still like like boomer millennials. You yeah. know what I mean? They they subscribe to those values. Yeah, yeah. The, pa- the patriots. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they they're doubling down. Yeah. Obviously, they're like 
you know what? Like, sorry, Native Americans. Like, you just lost. You lost. You're at the bottom of the totem pole. And it's like, oh, damn. Like, make it clear. But for at us. least there's a totem pole. Right. Which we, we like, appropriate. Keeping that? Yeah. So we're going <laughs> to appropriate it for an idiom for the rest of the future. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah. So it, because I was thinking about like, so the conversation around critical race theory, right? And like people, people that are doubling down on their whiteness are opposing critical race theory. Which is so weird. One, because they don't know what critical race theory is. If they knew, they would probably realize how racist they're being. By thinking what critical race theory is. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. it's like, that's not what that is. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, but it's like, by opposing critical race theory, you're kind of proving it. Yeah. And, but they don't, they don't see it that way. And I think it's because the areas where, uh, I think where there's the most pushback is the areas where there's not a lot of representation Mm -hmm. outside of what they see, Mm -hmm. which is I go to a school of a hundred kids, 98 of them are black or white, Mm -hmm. you know, and the other two are adopted Mm -hmm. and, but we're going to, you know, treat them the same but we don't want them going home asking their white parents did y'all own slaves like that we don't want to have that conversation and it's and it's strange to me because it's like what good is this gonna do you know what how what is a false history gonna do other than help like make a generation of people who are willing to be indoctrinated with a, with another round of American exceptionalism. Like it, that's going to suck because then we're going to have a bunch of new wars and I, people that want to go to war. Cause I feel like that's the only thing that we do is like, we just go to war. We're yeah. just like a big gang, like just going around shooting people and calling it like freedom. It's so weird. <laughs> you know, it's such a weird thing we do out here. Especially in, in with the people that are doubling down, I feel like that's what they want. Mm-hmm. They want to be proud of stopping a bad guy. Yeah. But they don't know that they're the bad guy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like they are the villains right now. That would require nuance. Yeah. And nuance doesn't exist anymore. Nah, it, it's gone. It's in in whichever all. direction. Any direction. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. So, I mean, like the, yeah, I don't, I don't know the argument. Honestly, because it's like if you are if you're worried about teaching critical race theory, which they don't uh, <laughs> to your kids and they'll feel bad that they're white. Sh- would they, though? Because they, though? It's, what they're saying is that, like, these people in history did bad things right. and you're a descendant of them. Right. That doesn't mean that you are doing bad things. Right. It just means that people did bad things. But I, I, I so I wonder, though, because I have this I have this like. This, this thing about white people that, that I have <laughs> is that they all, my mom used to tell me they're all millionaires in waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wonder if that's what it is, if that's the other problem for yeah. it, for the CRT thing is for, for these people that are doubling down on some nonsense that they don't know anything about is that they don't want to know that they were poor white people in the 1880s. Yeah. They don't want to know that they were, they were slave hands that became sharecroppers and they became equal to the now freed black people. They don't want to know that. I think that's really what it, cause then they can't be Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. They can't be George Washington. Yeah, yeah. They can't be Benjamin Franklin. They can't be all the amazing white people of history in their minds. They can't be Robert E. Lee. They can't be Jefferson Davis. <laughs> they can't be these great white people. They, you know, they, they just can't be. And I think that's hurting their psyche because they were raised to believe they could be. Mm-hmm. You can you can be that man. Mm-hmm. You can be the Mr. Monopoly character. You can be him. And it's like, that's the villain, though. Mm-hmm. Why would you want to be the villain? Because mm-hmm. in America, the villain's the hero. Yeah. And that's so crazy. Why are we like this? <laughs> like, <laughs> well... <laughs> Like, what is winning, right? Right. So What is winning? <laughs> we, we work every day so that we can eventually be the Monopoly guy, so that we can be winning. So we can be winning on the board. Uh, Tally it up. <laughs> yeah. But, like, what does that mean? And do you even want that life? Do you, Like, 
we're made to think we want that life right, right, right. by all the media that we consume. But like, what does it mean to be obscenely rich? Buying Twitter rich. Yeah, that's like, that's weird to me. <laughs> like of all the things. And that's why I like Kanye West. Because you know what Kanye West did? He argued that he should be on these boards for these companies so he can build houses and make cheaper clothes here. And I was like, dog, they don't want to hear that from you. <laughs> they want to hear how you can make them more money. And someone like Elon Musty Boy comes in and says, I want to buy this app, this bird. It makes me lose my mind. Because, and, and, because, like, what's the point? Mm -hmm. What is the point of buying a website like Twitter? Buying a company like Twitter? Is, is there some data that you're about to use that I don't know about? Is there some, is there new advertisements coming that we need to get ready for? Is the algorithm about to switch up? Like, is there something about the future that my tiny poor brain just cannot process that Elon's nepotism brain can? You know, like, does it make any, like, this place makes me lose my mind <laughs> on the regular all the time. Crazy. Crazy. Absolutely. And I mean, a lot of times I am honestly like, uh, the other day, my dad was like, what do you think about Elon Musk buying Twitter? Uh, and I'm like, I think the whims of what billionaires do has effectively nothing to do with me. I have no power None. over it. Yeah, and I can't affect it. It doesn't really affect me. I already don't really use Twitter. Right. But but with Twitter comes, I think with with this move, I think if it happens, we will see our society change, and in, in a uh, in a sense of like, there's a guy who owns this part of the internet, and there's a guy who owns this part of the internet. And then there's another guy that owns this part of the real world. <laughs> yeah. And like those, however many companies that will take up what we know is the real world and the internet will be owned by a few people. And for some reason we'll be getting mailed through Amazon. Like it'll, that's what it's going to be. And that's what makes me nervous. Cause like we'll be just watching the same 25 companies mm -hmm. run our lives. Yeah. And Elon Musk is going to be there with fucking Mark Zuckerberg just arguing over which islands they can buy and not buy. Yeah. And we have to deal with that. Mm -hmm. We have to deal with those repercussions. Yeah. I don't like it. So, <laughs> Tell your dad I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> like, what is that going to do? You it's know? not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, he and, doesn't like it. <laughs> this is like the same thing I was talking to uh, John McMillan about, like, the Ukraine thing. Yeah. And it's like... I can't have an opinion about the Ukraine thing. I'm not going to go there. Like, they don't want black people over there, so I don't know what I'm going to do over there. Like, it's unfortunately a they problem, and for some reason they're throwing us into it, and I'm just like, bro. Do you stand with Ukraine? I mean, I'm just standing. Whatever that means. What, what does that mean? What does that, like, that's why I'm so, I'm so ignorant to, like, geopolitics, and I, I tell people that all the time, because I live in a, in a black and white world. I can't live in the world. I'm my world's already too busy, you know, just being black in this state. Like it's it's limited to to drugs and warfare and a state sanctioned violence. Like it's those are the things that are around you when you're out here in Oklahoma. Why would I why would my brain have the capacity to even want to understand what's going on in another country? I can't even process it. Like it's too like, and especially not affect it. Right, right. I can I can barely get a street with a pothole filled in my city, and I live here. Yeah, I know three council people, and I can't figure out how to get sidewalks in my neighborhood. You know, what I'm saying? like it's how could I do any? Why? Why would I? How can I stand anywhere? How can I stand? You know, like that's a yeah. That's that's what's weird about the internet too, though. Is like you were how old were you when Coney twenty twelve happened? Uh, I would have been in... Were you at North? You yeah, were at yeah, North I would have been in high school, yeah. How big of a deal was that for you? Do you remember Coney 2012? I remember, I remember just the phrase. Yeah. I, but no one I knew anything? Do you remember, like, 
it. Like, I know it was like about, you know, like fucking child soldiers or whatever, but it's like, it's not like I can do anything about it. Exactly. Like that. But it was everywhere. Yeah. It was all over. These white kids were obsessed yeah. buying wristbands, mm-hmm. marching through their hallways. Mm-hmm. And there's real problems where their kids in their same schools aren't eating lunch. Yeah. I wasn't eating lunch. I wasn't eating lunch. <laughs> it's like, bro, like, what are y'all doing? Why are you telling me about poor kids? <laughs> and it's 2012, so I'm in college. I can't pay for college. <laughs> I got to work and pay rent. And I got to, I can't go to class. I'm wasting money and, like, paying for it. Mm-hmm. And you trying to tell me about some kids somewhere else? Mm-hmm. <laughs> my God, man. There's kids in my own family. I got more pro- like, but that's the thing. It's like we have a really bad problem with empathy, right? The we, um, and and this is just like a, a measurable thing, right? Yeah, so sure. so like if if you see like a starving black kid from Africa, it's like oh wow, like I feel so bad for this kid, and like people donate to that. Uh, you see two starving black kids, it's like oh wow, it's still it's still pretty sad, and then like. If you zoom out and show an entire village yeah. of starving people, yeah, it's like I I don't think so. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm I'm past. Yeah, and it's like, what do you mean? It's like more starving people. It's just like you should be giving people. more money, but like our brains, we're just like, mm, nope. Yeah, <laughs> I can do the one. I can do I can do that one. I can do lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I well, but I feel like those problems. They're solved by the people with forty four million forty four billion dollars to buy a website. Sure, you know it's if you have that many resources, mm-hmm. uh, access to, to companies that can produce food. <laughs> if you could produce a car, if you could produce a car that runs on electricity, you should be able to find a way <laughs> to get said resources to countries that don't have those resources mm-hmm. for not a lot of money because mm-hmm. you. Elon Musk himself said that he could end world hunger with a certain amount of money. Yeah, and they gave him the amount of money that was needed. And he was like, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I just want some attention. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> My wife left me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, we need more. Maybe just no more billionaires. <laughs> you know, just a billion dollars should not exist anymore. Well, I mean, and that's the thing. So, like, we we pass laws that are, like, for poor people. So like snap, for yeah, example, right. um, is like, it's not money. Cause it's, it's not, you can't just spend it anywhere. No, you, you can't, can't buy hot food. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta it's buy like, cold food. <laughs> it's like, we see that you are struggling to buy food. Yes. So here's this money for food, but we don't trust you to buy, to buy food. Right. So you can only use these special food bucks yeah. that, work on certain things because Only we just we things. don't trust you yeah. to spend this how you see best Make because sure we know better tier, though we know better we know the best <laughs> yeah it's it's not so weird thing too like everybody's different you know like not everybody can eat cereal mm-hmm. not everybody can drink milk mm-hmm. some people don't eat ham mm-hmm. you know some people don't eat bread <laughs> there's so many things that like these 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 benefits benefits and resources don't do you know they they more restrict and it's unfortunate because it's like you have a snap card but you don't have a gas card how are you gonna get somewhere you are you gonna bus? get to the store right to buy the food how you with gonna, the snap card you gonna get a so say you have to walk how are you gonna buy the cart from amazon to get to your house so you can get on the bus and take your groceries home you know it's just like well, why are we like this? Like, why Why are we a place that has more homes and bodies in homes like this? You know, buildings in the sky. Like, was the Jetsons a lie? You think the Jetsons were wrong? Like, were, did you ever watch the Jetsons? Yeah. Like, uh, the show in space or like, yes, but, but like. So here's, we're going back to that yeah, point yeah, yeah. that you, you said about like technology is like to bring us to space. Yeah. No, no, just not you yet. Think so? You don't think so? So, like, we're not getting off this rock until we get our shit together. I disagree. And, and I mean, sure, like, the rich people can get off the rock, sure. And they, they can go die in Mars for all I care. But, like, the, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, 
there's no way we're going to make it anywhere else. We're just going to kill the next planet. Yeah, and that's totally, we're fine with that. We are fine being viruses mm. and, 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 and fleas and ticks. Yeah. We're, we're fine being the parasite. <laughs> we've, de- we've already determined that. We've decided. Mm. That was decided before us, you know? Right. So we, uh, do you know about existential risk? No, I'm not a, I'm not well read. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm a philosophy hobbyist. Oh, so word, uh, word the, the, Hence this podcast. Uh, <laughs> um, one of the pieces in my machinations series uh, was it combined existential risk with uh, simulation theory. I'm sure you know about simulation theory. It's like, the oh, matrix. is this a simulation? Mm-hmm. And so it's like, basically we blew ourselves up and like this, this, song happens like at the end of time for humanity right and okay. the simulation stops and like the simulation itself is sort of singing to the creator of the simulation being like this is a broken simulation right. it's shutting it down. was it was doomed as soon as we made the atomic bomb uh you think that's when the song came out <laughs> <laughs> the song was a giant 808 <laughs> across the universe Interesting. and, and not not to say that, like, you know, the that they were singing it, you know, when the atomic bomb was made, it's like after we destroyed ourselves, like way in the future, you know, we can still blow ourselves up with atomic bombs. Um, and that's the existential risk. There's there's just inventions happening that like bring the clock closer to midnight. Oh, the the doomsday clock. clock. Yeah. 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 Um, and it's like the the plow, like great. Totally, you know, we can make lots of food way easier. Right. Dope. There's a, there's a smidge of that that like paybacks onto the atomic bomb. And so it's like, eventually we're just like pulling inventions out and it's like, cool, the cell phone, that's weird. All right, it's cool, uh, Twitter, that's something else. Uh, and then like- But it's still, like, th- yeah. these moments become seconds. Yeah, yeah. But then the atomic bomb became a minute. Yeah. Got and it. it like, as soon as we had that, we already have the power to destroy ourselves. Uh, so we're at we're at twelve we're at eleven fifty nine <laughs> yeah yeah eleven fifty eight yeah um and all the little things in between just bring us closer and closer yeah like so you think we're just gonna do it ourselves be done here yeah we're we're not getting off this rock until we get our shit together see I I see I see people believing that and knowing that <laughs> and then putting their monies behind getting off this rock using their newfound slaves through the prison system uh, and training those bodies to then go off rock and produce and labor, like do labor to make another world for them. And then we'll see uh, the you generation. Clipping? clipping? Yeah. Yeah, the rap group? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They made an album called Splendor and Misery, which is about an escaped slave uh, on a slave ship, like a spaceship. And yeah. he commandeers the ship and tries to like get away in the, Onboard AI, AI falls in love with him. And it's, <laughs> yeah. it's bonkers. I love it. They're uh, so weird. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> clipping is like one of my favorite. Yeah. Things. I got into their last two projects. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, huh. yeah this, this is something that like keeps being explored. So, I mean, and and just Afrofuturism and everything. It's yeah. like, it's, that's my jam. Um, but like, yeah, of course, like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll go to Mars. And it's like, yeah, but you're poor. It's like, yeah, but I'll just use the like Elon bucks on Mars to like do his slave labor yeah. and then I'll survive. And it's like, you're just going to be in debt forever yeah. now on an inhabitable, uninhabitable planet yeah. or less habitable planet right. than Earth. You got like 20 years max yeah. <laughs> and you might die. Yeah. 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 But at least you made it to Mars. You got What's that worth? Nothing to us. <laughs> it might be everything to us right now. Mm. Like, oh, we can go to Mars. But it's like, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> like, we're not like, like Fry and Futurama, where the first man on Mars was like eating pizza. You know, it's, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm nervous. We will go uh, off this rock and we'll just redo shadow slavery on another planet. And this time it'll just be everybody and they won't call it slavery. They'll just call it some type of labor. Yeah. And we'll just have three generations of that. And, you know, they'll have their their perfect world because the old world is gone in the new world. And yeah. They'll have new gods. And, well, then, you know, great. they'll have their own Haiti. Yeah. And then, of like, course. the they'll try their best to, like, 
separate and then they'll just be destroyed like they did with Haiti. <laughs> It'd be exciting. <laughs> but I hope you're right. I hope uh I hope we just we just blow the planet up. Well, I mean, I just I just By it's accident. that or we figure it out, right? Yeah, like so Star Trek style. Um and and something in in that piece is a line that I'm really proud of is I call it Fermi's cleansing. You know about the Fermi Fermi paradox? No. I'm uh, I'm not well. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> uh, I'm a giant nerd. Uh, <laughs> so the Fermi paradox is like scientists were like astrophysicists were like looking at just how vast the universe is. It is effectively infinite. Yeah. And so in that infinity, there must be more intelligent life. Uh, Just you roll the dice. Right. Okay. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. Where is it? That's the paradox. Okay. Okay. It's like the, like it's the men in black. Yeah. Or, yeah, Independence Day. Will Smith movie. It's a Will Smith movie. There's, yeah, yeah. There's an pick, alien pick your out Will there. Smith movie. Yeah, so there's an alien out there. There's something out there that doesn't want to find us. Or. Or we have to find something, it. Or something happens to where it doesn't. So like, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, maybe, okay. maybe they're looking down on us and it's like, they're not ready. Right. Um, or or they're, they're not ready either. Yeah. We're in the same that's, spot. That's the thing. So the thing. I call it Fermi's cleansing. Got as soon it. as an intelligent enough species finds out that they can split the atom. Yeah. Then we'll know. The clock starts. Yeah. And it's like, it's only a matter of time before someone before else they blow the, themselves up. Huh. And so it's, there's a filter. Okay. And so intelligent life reaches a certain point And then it's like, well, we can't get past this unless we weave our way through not destroying ourselves. That is incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. Wow. I hope that happens too. <laughs> Honestly, I, I am so ready for this to be done. <laughs> like in the world. Yeah. Now, and like, I mean, so like thinking about Ukraine, right? There's nothing you and I can do about it. Nothing we can obviously. do about it. Nothing. But like the fact that Putin's like, I could use nukes. And we're like, you won't do it. Will you do it? Don't tickle me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, and so that like, is, that'd be we're, we're close. We're, we're already close. close. Yeah, and it's like, there's nothing that we lowly people can do about it. It's just the whims of oligarchs and rich people to like, you know, Putin just decides I'm going to take land. Yeah. Yeah. I want it. At, at whatever cost. Yeah. Ooh. And. But he wouldn't drop a, a nuke in Europe, would he? I just seems like a bad idea. You think going it's like that's the thing. It's like all of it was a bad idea. I mean, yeah, it's all a bad idea. But like <laughs> dropping a nuke on Europe is a bad idea. That's the that's the cradle of Western civilization. That's where everyone's identity comes from. Like white people wouldn't know what to do with themselves after that. Could you imagine? Is Russia a Western civilization? Now, uh, my friend told me Russia is Russia. <laughs> I, I asked them. I, I said, "Do Russians?" This was before Ukraine, because I asked it again after Ukraine happened. And I said, do Russians think of themselves as white people or do they think of themselves as Asian people? And they're like, Russians only think of themselves as Russians. And I was like, that's crazy because I don't, no one does. No one thinks like that. And so when, when the Ukrainian situation happened, I was, I was confused because in my mind, it looked like a conflict of like identity and, uh, you know, who is and who isn't. Russian or Western Mm -hmm. and Russian being like, no, Ukraine is Russia. That's mine. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all supposed to be with us. Mm -hmm. And Ukraine is like, no, we're over here with the Europeans. We're Western society. They're like, no, you're Russian. But of of, of course I was wrong. There's so many other elements to this that I had no idea about. But uh, again, it came back to me. It was like, no, Russians don't look at anything else, but their own selves as Russian. They're, we're not white. We're not. We're not Asian. We are just Russians. And I was like, "That's yo weird." Yeah, <laughs> it's it's something else. Yeah. But I mean, when you have that amount of like fucking landmass, yeah. you're a continent. Yeah, you They're might as continent. well just be a continent. Yeah, like you shouldn't be aligned with anyone else. You should be your own thing, <laughs> and do your own thing away from me. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it involves nukes now. It involves nukes now, and the clock's moving forward. Yeah. Like that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. I I want to know more, but I'm too busy. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, but and that's why I think like technology is just 
a double-edged sword at all times. Like, yeah, absolutely. The internet happened and it's like, we could have access to all the information on earth and like learn everything we can. And we still can right yeah, now. Yeah. Instead, right. we're scrolling through TikTok. We're, yeah, I was getting my feed, <laughs> lighting it up, listening to botched versions of R. Kelly songs that should not be played anymore. <laughs> you know, but that's it is what it is. But it's, 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 it's a tool. Like you said, it's a tool. And uh, it's a matter of how it gets used. I would like to see some things differently, but it's not up to me. Right. And I mean, we're not the, we're not, we're not the, the people tweaking the algorithm. Yeah. That's the, you know, the algorithm's the scary part because <laughs> like, I don't, so I will be honest in uh, 2015, I got really fascinated with the end of the Obama years and I knew what, I had a feeling what was coming mm-hmm. and I told the homies, I told the white friends, I was like, yo, what are y'all's parents doing? <laughs> you know, who are they looking at politically? And I was like, doesn't it seem weird that like there's been an uptick in these actions and behaviors and then 2016 happens. And so in between 2015 and 2016, I was diving into right wing uh, correspondence. Just and to see like just what, I, what's going I was like, on. What's going to happen? Because like, I know what the left's going to do. They're going to put fucking Hillary up. We're going to do a Hillary thing. We're going to make it work with Hillary, yada, yada, yada. And that's what they did. But when I was watching the right, I was coming across Milo Yiannopoulos. I was Ben Shapiro, Gavin McGuines, Candace Owens. And it's like, yo, something's happening over here. And we haven't been watching it. We've been hey ho with the Lumineers for eight years now. And they've been prepping for something else. What are y'all hiding from me? And when I was doing that, my algorithms started thinking I was a white guy. Lost, lost so many videos. You know, like back when YouTube was like a fun place, you would like have videos that you were like, oh man, I'll remember that title. I can go search for it again. It'll pop up. Those videos gone, you know, and I'm just getting inundated with patriotism and vote for this guy. Watch out for Nancy Pelosi. All these things. I was like, this is wicked. Is this the future? And it became the future. Whereas like, you know, your algorithms really do kind of make your identity for you. Yeah, we don't exist in the same reality. No, we don't. <laughs> like, we really somewhere else. It's scary. <laughs> scary. Very terrifying. Yeah, and so the thing about that, uh, the the right-wing agenda long ago made the decision that abortion is the golden ticket. That's the one. Uh, That's the line you have to cross. Um, and... Obviously, they themselves could care less. If if their 16-year-old daughter gets pregnant, she's getting an abortion right or now. Or if their, their 55-year-old husband gets someone pregnant, mm-hmm. they going to snip, snap, snip. You know what I'm saying? Suck yeah. that shit out. Yeah. So, I mean, it's never been about no, abortion. It's, it's something else is at play. Yeah. It's about rallying the Christians. Yes. Uh Getting that base going. It, about something that is basically undeniable, right? Like when you when you really think about abortion, it's like it's still sketchy. It's like even as someone who, you know, supports abortion rights completely is like killing a baby is a little bit weird. I mean, is it killing a baby? Right. And that's the weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. When did it become a baby? <laughs> when does a baby become a baby? Exactly. Yeah. And that's and we have this big gray area right. that the radical Christians are like, baby. It's a baby. You came. <laughs> and then and then for everyone else, it's like that's a clump of cells. And then it's like it's all a gradient. And that's why, like, you know, the later it is, the more risky it is. And it's like, you know, science. There's, fucking, there's like, science. Yeah, involved. there's there's some gray area here, but like, you know, it's still it's still a little sketchy. It's still like that's a proto baby. And it's like, it's, it's just, it, there's a lot of risk. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the only thing about abortion. I can like, like that I know is that there's risk. There is just terrible risk involved. And be in the way that the, the way that it's being handled now is only adding greater risk. Exactly. And so. to, to like your point that it's sketchy, it's only going to get more sketchy because mm-hmm. now people are going to have to do it how they used to do it, mm-hmm. which was in someone's fucking shack. Or, but, you know, they, you know, maybe the shops will stay open and 
people who at worst will just have to be escorted by tall men with umbrellas so no one can see who it is. Yeah. And which, yeah, that's what right. it is. Right. And, and so regardless of the, like, the science making it clear that, like, there is, this, you know, a sane time period within which you can do this and, like, Safe people least. should be able to do this and the right to bodily autonomy and all that all stuff. All those things. The Christian right can look at that and be like, nope, baby. Baby. And we will draw this line here. And regardless of anything else that we do, whether it's gun rights, whether it's cutting welfare, all these other things, you know, white people are like generally affected by those things as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's like, but they'll vote against their own interests because babies, babies. we yeah. have to protect the children. Did you see the take that um, that this is just a way to strip privacy. Yeah, I did. I didn't see that. And yeah, I was yeah. like, that's an interesting, interesting thing. I never thought about the implications of this one particular case, this one mm -hmm. situation opening up a door yeah. to all these other situations, homosexual relationships or, uh, uh, you know, multiracial relationships, mm -hmm. uh, home privacy. You know, privacy. Yeah, yeah. Like just that alone. Like, what will privacy look like in yes. twenty years? I've I've said this before, but they've got us so focused on socialism and communism that we don't know or recognize fascism and authoritarianism. Oh yeah, when it's right knocking here. at the back door. Yeah, it is here. it's already here. Yeah, we're wearing the colors. We got the flags. We do the pledges. Mm -hmm. We got the militaries. <laughs> like, we got the movies. Mm -hmm. We got the movies supporting it. You know, the movies getting support. Like, it's, it is there, you know. Some people don't want to see it, but yeah. I don't know, because I don't, I've only lived in America. I don't, I, my people have only been here. But you're from Venezuela. Yeah, I was born there. You were born there. Well, I mean, I I, I don't have a lot. I was, I was like, we yeah, don't have yeah, a lot. Because yeah. I was like, I'm really fascinated with that. Sure, sure. But I, I didn't grow up in Venezuela. I came here the day I turned six. So, But like your family has... Yeah, but that's the thing. It's like, I don't know my family that lives there. Uh, I speak Spanish fluently. I have, you know, the staples of like immigrant culture where it's like, keep the food and music and stuff like that. But like the actual day-to-day -day of like a Venezuelan is foreign to me. Um, and so I'm still not a U.S. citizen. And so as far as America cares, like I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not <laughs> American. You'll be safe. Uh, <laughs> be safe out here. Uh, <laughs> I have a green card, so it's fine. But like the. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, right, right. Be right. safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really uh, weird out here. <laughs> And yeah, so this is the only culture I've known. And I, I have a little bit of an outsider's perspective in that going through the immigration process is a whole thing. And I have an episode of that on BitDef. I can't remember the number that it is, but like you can just like Santiago's immigration experience, I think is what the title was. So you can search that on SantiagoRamones.com. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean... We have to, like, we non-white people have to look out for each other. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll be watching. Keep my eyes open. That's why I try to get a seat at the table when I get in the door. I try to bring more in, you know, because they move funny. Yeah. These people do move funny. Yeah. And if you got to throw it out about Martha Stewart, sometimes you got to. You got to throw out a Martha Stewart. You know? <laughs> Don, thank you so much for doing this with me. Yeah, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Where can we find you and your things? Uh, at I am Donald Two on Twitter. Uh, at Gaslit Oki with a number of or underscores uh, in between each word. Gas underscore lit underscore Oki on Instagram. Uh, find me on the Real World. Uh, Lust Online at any stage in Oklahoma. Tim Buchanan and the Trump and Vines going on tour. Uh, both bands here soon. So, yeah, holler at me. Once again, thank you so much. I'm Santiago Ramones. I'm Don Dada. Hell yeah. Now what's about to play? We're going to play RYB uh, from Lust Online. Uh, it's not the first song I'm on with them, but it is the last song we released. It's really good.
You can find everything that I do on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. I make music and produce audio. The music you're hearing now is music I made. You can listen to official releases by Santiago Ramones on Spotify, Apple Music, and the other streaming places. Or you can support me directly by buying my music on Bandcamp. I'm working on Hypothetical, my first singer-songwriter album. So if you'd like to hear that at some point, there are lots of ways to support me on my website. There's a Discord server in which we discuss deep topics from the podcast, but it's also a community of beautiful human beings. All the links to all my things are on my website, SantiagoRamones.com. Please take a moment to rate and review the podcast. It would mean a lot to me to hear what you have to say, and it lets others know what to expect better than I could ever explain. I want to help the world have deeper conversations. So thank you for listening to and supporting Bit Depth. I was in the podcast with my three things. They shape my life philosophy. Those three things are love never fails. It's going to be okay. I might be wrong. <laughs>